In the second video, I'm passing lambda calculus expressions. We start in the same place as last time, but now instead of using the grammar that was generated, the parser that was generated by the grammar, we are going to pass the expression by hand ourselves. So last time I explained how to read this expression down here, which was produced by the parser from this lambda calculus program, and the parser itself was generated by the grammar in the top left corner. So now if you have the same expression, we start from the same expression which is given here in blue, and we want to pass it by hand, how do we do this? So what we have to remember are the rules for putting in the parentheses. So one of the rules is that if I have three lambda terms, A, B, C, so I have an application between A and B and an application between B and C, then this associates to the left. So I should put the parentheses like this. Okay, so what does this tell us about this lambda expression? So this could be the A, right? And this could be the B, and this could be the C. So we know now that the parentheses must go around the A and the B. So this means that I need to put parentheses around here. And then also I could take the X to be the A and the Y to be the B and the Z to be the C. So from this we see that we also need parentheses around here, okay. And then there's another rule we need to remember. Um, so what happens if I have two lambdas? Actually, I should put this a little bit to the left. So if I have two lambdas, Let's call this A and B. Then the parentheses go around like this, lambda x, lambda y, A, B. And the parentheses go to the right in this case. So if I match this up here, uh, that could be the A and that could be the B, right? And so then the parentheses go around here. Okay, so now I have the parentheses in place. I can uh, pass it quite easily. So what we should remember here is that the word parsing comes from part. So we're taking this expression into it parts. So this is the whole expression, I underlined it now. And so how do we take this into part? We just need to uh, have a look at where does this expression splits into two parts. And it's quite clear that if we look at the parentheses, there's only one way of splitting it into two parts. And so when we draw the tree, pull this up a bit. So when we draw the tree now, we know that we have two parts. And on the right, we have the C. Okay, so then we just go on and now we need to split the left hand side into two parts. Past this already, we split this already into two parts. So I can erase this. So I match the red parentheses. So now I need to look inside the red parentheses where I find the next possible way to split it into two parts, and that's uh, that's here. So this goes. I have two parts here again. And on the right, <coughs> I have the AB, so the AB is just AB. 
Okay, so I've done the AB, I passed the AB. And so what's next on the left? So on the next, left, next, so the blue parenthesis I can take away now. So I can go beyond the blue parenthesis, inside the blue parenthesis here now. And so then inside the blue parenthesis, the next place to split it is here. And I just put the lambda up there to indicate that I'm passing a lambda expression. And then on the left, I have the x. And then I still have to pass the expression on the right. So I can go inside the orange parenthesis now. So we see that this is a, another lambda we can split here. So we have another lambda, which we split. And on the variable is the y. And then we have something on the right. So we pass the y and we are now passing x, y, z. And x, y, z splits here after the y, between the y and the z. So maybe I need to scroll up a little bit more. So we split the x, y, z and the z goes to the right. And then I have an x in the Okay, let's kind of zoom out a bit and compare what we've done with what we've done last time. So we generate now this tree on the right by directly passing this uh, lambda expression. So let's compare a little bit what we have on the left and on the right. So the tree on the left we got from the machine generated parser. And it's really just a little bit notation that is different. So um, I can I can kind of line up these two trees side by side. So the C and kind of all of this here gets a little bit like kind of abbreviated to just the C here. But we see that the structure is the same. So I have an application here again, which, which matches up to this one. And then, for example, this abstraction matches up with this lambda here. And um, so if we go through the tree step by step, another abstraction here, another abstraction here, we see that these trees are really the same. They're just kind of labeled differently. The reason we need uh, the more expressive labels on the left-hand side is because we want to implement interpreters by recursion over abstract syntax trees. And so they will use these labels, eApps and eApp and eVar, uh, for pattern matching their recursive uh, exploration of these trees. Thanks for watching.